having compassion for other people is at the top of that list. I would say commitment is at the top of that list. And also a spirit of constructive engagement. And by compassion, I don't just mean sympathy. It certainly isn't pity. It's being present and it's also feeling with other beings. You know, during the years of the Oprah show, I interviewed over 37,000 people one-on-one. -on -one. So whenever I'm telling my girls anything and they say, oh, they start rolling their eyes, I go, I'm the only person you're gonna talk to is talk to 37,000 people. <laughs> so if I were you, I would pay attention. <laughs> but during all those years of talking to over 37,000 people one-on-one, -on -one, I could feel what they were feeling so strongly. Sometimes it made me sick, literally. So I had to learn how to feel how others were feeling, feel with others, which, it, is, which is what it means to be compassionate, to feel with others without taking in all of their stuff. Being compassionate means I feel with you. It is one of the greatest qualities in the world to have if you're gonna be uh, majoring in what it takes to be a great human being. I feel with you means I not only am willing to walk in your shoes, it means my heart beats with yours. It means I see myself in you. It means I may not have shared that circumstance, but I know what heartbreak feels like. I know what pain feels like, and all pain is the same. It means I can feel your will to want to do better and be better. And I feel and I am with you. In spite of everything that's happened to you, I feel your need to rise. I want to help you rise. I want to rise with you. If you can capture the humanity of people, if you can just capture the humanity of the people, of the stories that you're telling, you then get that much closer to your own humanity. And you can confront your bias and you can build your credibility and hone your instincts and compound your compassion. You can use your gifts, that's what you're really here to do, to illuminate the darkness in our world. So many people are worried about building a brand. I hear kids on social media talking about their brand. And I used to really resent the word when people would say to me, oh, you have this brand, because I never, never even thought about a brand. I just thought about day in and day out, making the best right choice for me. But now I embrace it because I recognize people see me as a brand. But for me, it's not a business. It is a question of what do you stand for? And I will say this, you're nothing if you're not the truth. So I have made, I've made a living, I've made a living, I've made a life, I've made a fortune really, it's fantastic. <laughs> all good from being true to myself and, and that's the if I could leave you with any message today that is it uh, the biggest reward is not financial benefits though it's really good you can get a lot of great shoes <laughs> nothing wrong with great shoes but those of you who have a lot of shoes know that having great shoes and a closet full of shoes or cars or houses or square footage doesn't fill up your life. It doesn't. But living a life of substance can. Substance through your service, your offering of your whole self. And the baseline for how do you live a life of substance is whatever is the truth for you. What do you stand for? Problem is everybody is meeting hysteria with more hysteria. And then we just are all becoming hysterical and it's getting worse. What I've learned all these years is that we're not supposed to match it or even get locked into resisting or pushing against it. We're supposed to see this moment in time for what it is. We're supposed to see through it and then transcend it. That is how you overcome hysteria. And that is how you overcome 
the sniping at one another, the trolling, the mean-spirited partisanship on both sides of the aisle, the divisiveness, the injustices, and the out-and-out -out hatred. You use it. Use this moment to encourage you, to embolden you, and to literally push you into the rising of your life. And to borrow a phrase from my beloved mentor, Maya Angelou, just like moons and like suns, with the certainty of tides, just like the hope springing high, you will rise. People may not remember your every word, they may not remember all of your actions, but they certainly remember how your words and your actions made them feel. So let's leave here today with the collective memory of wanting to create enlightenment in the world. Let's leave here knowing that we can give people the sense that they have been heard and respected Let's foster original thinking and humane treatment. Let's seek out the words we don't know. Let's do away with the us and them. I've seen us and them create a whole lot of problems, but I've never seen it solve one thing. Instead, let's nourish our artists. Let's offer the possibility of something better for all of us because a new day is no longer on the horizon. The new day is now.